in this video we're going to be looking at circuit calculations. Now there are two main types of circuits that we need to be aware of, series and parallel. In a series circuit the components or the resistors here are end to end, whereas in a parallel circuit they are side to side. We also need to be aware of this very important equation V equals IR. V stands for volts, I is current measured in amps and R is resistance measured in ohms. Let's start with the series circuit. This is an ammeter, it measures the current. In a series circuit the current is the same everywhere. For example if the ammeter reads 5 that means all the components are going to have 5 amp current. If it reads 10, that means all the components have a 10 amp current, and so on. Next, we'll look at voltage. To measure voltage, we have to use a voltmeter, and each component has to have its own individual voltmeter. Now, with voltage, the total voltage gets shared. That means if this cell provides a total voltage of 10 volts, the components will share that. For example, they'll get 7 and 3, or 2 and 8, or if they are identical, 5 and 5, any numbers that add up to 10. And finally, let's look at resistance in the series circuit. To work out resistance, we're going to rearrange this equation so that it's equal to voltage over current. Let's put in some numbers. So our cell has a voltage of 10 volts and the current in this circuit is 5 amps. We can see that we have two components, we'll label them A and B. A has a voltage of 4 volts and B has a voltage of 6 volts. Okay, let's work out the resistance of A. So we're going to put voltage over current. We can see that A has a voltage of 4 and the current is the same everywhere, so 5 and that gives us 0 0.8. Now let's do the same for B. So 6 is the voltage and 5 is the current and that gives us 1.2. Now we've managed to work out the resistance of A and B. However, what about the resistance of the whole circuit? So all we have to do is add them together. 0 0.8 plus 1.2 gives us 2 ohms and that is the total resistance in this circuit. So to summarize, voltage and resistance are shared. That means you have to add up all the individual voltages and resistances to work out the total. Current, on the other hand, is the same everywhere. Now let's look at parallel circuits. Notice here that there are many branches, so there are going to be multiple ammeters. The current gets divided or shared between the branches. For example, Let's say that the total current in the main branch is 5 amps. That means the two smaller branches have to add up to 5 amps. Also, each component has the current of its branch. So we can see the top one has a current of 2 amps because the branch is 2 amps and the bottom component has a current of 3 amps. What about if the current was 8? Well, we could have 4 and 4 because they add up to 8 or we could have 5 and 3. Again, any number that adds up to 8 in this case. Now, let's look at voltage. So we can see that each component has its own voltmeter like before. However, the rule is different with voltage. Voltage is the same everywhere. So if the total voltage was 10 volts, that means each component also has 10 volts. If it was 15 volts, Again, each component will have 15 volts. What about if it was 3 volts? You guessed it, 3 volts for each. Okay, what about resistance? So again, we're going to rearrange the equation. R is going to be equal to V over I. We'll label our components and we'll put in some numbers. So the total voltage of this circuit is 10 volts. And the total current is 6 amps, which has been shared as 2 and 4. Okay, let's work out the resistance of A. We're going to do its voltage divided by its current. So the total voltage was 10 volts and the current of A is going to be 4, not 6. Remember, we only use its branch, so 4. 
that gives us 2.5 ohms. For B, we're going to do the same thing, voltage over current. The voltage of B is 10 volts and the current is 2 amps. That's going to give us 5 ohms resistance. Okay, now let's work out the total resistance. We do not add them together like we did in series circuits. For parallel, the rule is a little bit different. For parallel circuits, the total resistance is going to be smaller than the lowest resistance. So let's talk about why this happens. Let's say they give you three options. What is the total resistance for this particular circuit? Is it 3 ohms? Is it 0 0.6 ohms? Or is it 7.5 ohms? Well, our lowest resistance is 2.5 from the two components. That means the answer has to be 0 0.6 because this is the only one from the three options that is lower than the lowest. So how does this work? The equation is the following. 1 over total resistance is equal to 1 over the first resistance plus 1 over the second one and so on depending on how many resistors you have. Here we're going to put the numbers into this equation. So 2.5 is one resistance and 5 ohms is the other one. Then we're going to work out our total. So adding them together gives us 3 over 5. Now we can flip both equations and that gives you 5 over 3 which is 0 0.6 ohms. Now this equation is not in all exam boards so you're going to have to double check with your specification to see if you have to know this. However the rule that the total resistance is lower than the lowest is in all exam boards. So to summarize Voltage, current and resistance. We know that a voltage is going to be the same everywhere in a parallel circuit. Current gets shared between the branches and resistance, the total resistance is smaller than the lowest. So that was series and parallel circuits introduction. In the next video we'll look at some example calculations involving series and parallel circuits. Hey guys! If that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.